or current student group. So we have got Jake, Naomi, uh, Lara, Tam, and Ethan. Lovely. And um, we were asked to um, just produce a really quick interview of what life was like for these guys before the lockdown and what it's like now, and maybe a couple of things you can pray for them. So, who's going to go first? Actually, why don't you introduce yourself one at a time and say what you were doing before the lockdown. So, Jake, do you want to start? Sure. Um, hello, I'm Jacob. Uh, before the lockdown, I was studying for my three A levels, which I'm no longer taking. Yeah. Ethan? Uh, so, I'm Ethan, and before all this, I was... Uh, applying for medicine and um, hockey, football, sport. So that's all been put on hold. Naomi? I'm Naomi and before the lockdown I was looking for design jobs and in the time being working at Levi and f &M. Brilliant and um, Naomi's the other leader of the student group. Just um, say that. Right, who's left? Tam? Tam. Hi, I'm Tam Zim. I, before the lockdown, was at school um, studying A-levels and I used to work at a cafe on Sundays. Obviously, that's all closed, so. And Lara? Hi, I'm Lara. Before the lockdown, I was doing my A-levels, had my driving test coming up, and I was in West Side Story. What about West Side Story? <laughs> <laughs> right, so, um, do you want to say what it's like for you now, Lara? Okay, so now, like, obviously we don't leave the house that much, only for exercise, so I'm going out on bike rides, doing baking... And yeah, I'm reading my Bible more, more, I feel. And what's happened kind of education wise? Oh, is that what you meant? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought any, you just meant what I was doing. Any answer is perfectly good. Oh, Wait. I thought you just meant what I was doing just in general? Oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm very interested in your baking. But yeah, education wise as well. Oh, well, I'm kind of just... Waiting to see what happens, really, because, like, they've told us that they're going to, like, give us predicted grades. So we're just waiting on them, really. That's kind of out of my control now. Have they given you any time frame that you're to expect that? No, they said they were going to, like, give us, try and give us our results before, like, the normal results day, which I think was, like, August 17th. Or something around or August thirteenth, but they're trying to trying to give it us before then. But like they just we just don't know really what's going on. And actually, I didn't pre warn you about this, but you're all applying for unis as well. Are some of you still waiting for offers, or have you kind of got places firmed up? I get the grades now. Yeah, I've heard from all my unis. I just need to actually pick which ones my first and second choice. Okay. Yeah. Mine was weird because I got an unconditional offer, but it was like only unconditional if I put it as my first choice. Then I had to wait two weeks. But then the government sent out an email saying that they've suspended giving out unconditional offers. So now I'm not really sure what my offer is, if I have to get the grades or if it's unconditional. So there's a lot of confusion, basically. Yeah. yeah. Jake, what about you? Um, I just firmed my offer for uni and... I'd just applied for my accommodation about a week before lockdown. Naomi, you're in a bit of a different boat from everybody else. So what are you up to at the moment? Um, well, I'm not working for Levi at the minute because that's been furloughed. But I'm still having to go into Tesco every week, which is, it's, it's fine, but it's just a bit worrying when, because you know all the people you're working with will keep their two metres but 
you can't guarantee everyone else is going to do the same thing. So it wasn't as frightening at first to go in, but now it's just kind of like it's at the back of your mind the whole time. Even when the music's playing, you're still thinking, oh, this is it's not a good day. Or the people are coming too close to you. We had an interesting conversation before we came on, didn't we? And Jake was saying he's not too worried about things because there's nothing you can kind of do to change it. So you just have to try not to get too anxious. And Lara was saying she's kind of struggling to know what to do and you're finding it a bit more worrying, aren't you? I think what's strangest is that uh, some of us either we had exams which we were working to an exact date and now that's all we've all been told that those dates are the most important dates for us and we've really got to prepare for them and now they've all just kind of gone out the window mm. and also then the other thing we'd be doing is coursework so if you do art subjects or any other subjects really you'd have coursework you're doing and that's all just been cut off now and we'll never get to complete it or finish it yeah shame because we're all stuck here like the end goal of like the actual exams and now like the exams just aren't happening so it's like mm. a bit strange it's a chance to prove yourself ultimately so it's a bit of a shame that we don't get the opportunity to do that it's um you know we all work hard through through the years so like our ongoing assessments that shouldn't be a problem but it would be nice to have a chance at the end to um like prove what we're worth and um, show how much we can achieve with exams. Mm -hmm. But then it's also interesting because it puts into question, it's for a chance for the people who sort of criticise exams and say that we don't need them, it's a chance to see how far that works or what a situation without exams would look like and how that could be implemented. So it might have further impacts down the line, it might cause a change to A-levels in the future as well as just this year. Yeah. Um, Tam, you were going to give some things that people could pray for. Yeah, so I think pull up one of the main things for us would be like some reassurance with what's going to happen with exams um, and that everyone gets the results that they they deserve and they've worked hard for, like regardless of not doing the exams, just that we all get the same like final thing that we all needed. Um, and then just that everyone keeps safe and everyone's family members are hopefully like safe and not very many people are ill and I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tam and Ethan are both applying for medicine and so um, it's been an interesting thing to think through, hasn't it? Watching what's been going on and thinking about whether this is still something you want to go into. But you've both decided it is. Yeah. Definitely. <clears throat> there we yeah. are. I mean, hopefully it'll cause some positive changes as well to our healthcare system like for the better. So we'll be in an even better place when we, um, when the, being a junior doctor and progressing forward through that, whether that's in how staff are treated or um, PPE, um, respect for NHS staff or just a shake up to the system with like any waiting times and like sort of the logistics of that. I think it'd be interesting to see what changes are made as well for when we have to read around the subject and we have to, for our interviews, like get an idea of what we'd, what we'd be going into and that could change now by like when we're at university. So good to see what does happen. Um, so the other thing I wanted to know from you, um, and any of you can kind of pipe in, is just um, how you're getting on without having church, without having YF. Um, there is, just for, the, just for information for church, there is still quite a lot happening with YF. Um, so Friday night and Sunday night um, after cafe are both running um, on Zoom and student group, as you see. It's on a Tuesday night. Um, I did a Bible study with some girls on Monday afternoon and I'm having a virtual Costa with Jonathan and some of the boys tomorrow all on Zoom and so there is still quite a lot of contact with YF as far as we can make it anyway. 
but how are you guys finding it not seeing each other at YF not being able to go to church and all that kind of thing I think it's hard being able, not being able to come together and I think a lot of the time we feed off each other and being around each other and a lot of the time that's when we most experience God but I think it makes us realise that no matter what the circumstances, he's still there for us. And that all it takes is a roll call and we're all still back as a family together and with him. Yeah. Anybody else? I think also it's sort of stepping back a bit more, like say when we first joined YF, because like uh, all of us here were like members of the band and we'd like do epilogues or run activities and so we had like involvement with YF just beyond the tending but whereas now with the Zoom calls it's more of a step back and it's all up to like the leaders they like sort of take the reins and turn who lead the activities and the epilogues and so it's nice to be in that place again like when we join YF as well. Yeah, I miss all of like the singing worship and all of that because that was like always like my favourite part. I always think it's quite nice on the Zooms as well to see people that, so there's certain people that I'd talk to normally in my day to life, but when you go to YF, you get a chance to like talk to different people maybe that are like different ages and stuff. Um, and doing Zooms and things um, allows you to talk to those people as well, which is quite nice. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you very, very much. And when church finally gets all back together, hopefully there'll be people from the congregation who recognise you and say hello. <laughs> you never know. Right. Thank you. <laughs>